In this mini tutorial, we're going to take a look at the single image 2D display widget in EMAN 2.12. Similar to the other demonstrations, I have starting out in a folder which contains a variety of different image objects of, of different types. I'm going to use E2 display uh, to open the widget that we're interested in, in using today. Uh, when I open E2 Display, I'll see the list of files in the current folder. Uh, the file we're going to use is allrefs08.hdf. This is a stack file which contains 80 by 80 images, and there are 64 of them in the file. Uh, this was the result of a 2D reference-free class averaging uh, in, uh, in a standard single particle refinement sequence. Now, if I double-click on this image, it's going to open a 2D tiled display widget shows us all the different images in the file. That's not what we want to do this time. This widget is fine, this is a, that's a different demonstration, uh, but uh, it doesn't have as many capabilities for manipulating images uh, or measuring images. So we'll close that and instead of double clicking we're going to click on show 2D. That will open a single image display uh, which shows all of the images in the file but only one at a time. I can now use my mouse my uh, mouse wheel to zoom in or out, or I could use the uh, trackpad and, and use the standard zoom operation. Uh, if I middle click on the image, like any other widget in Eman 2, that will open a control panel. Now if we look at the control panel, uh, we'll see there are a variety of sliders for controlling things, buttons for, uh, for manipulating the way the image is displayed, and there's a histogram. Uh, if I mouse over the histogram, it will allow me to make uh, some basic measurements of, of the histogram and tell me uh, where I am and how many values there are at that particular density value. Now, if I want to look through the images in the file, I can just use the up arrow, hold it down, and or, or the down arrow and hold it down, and that will let me scroll through the different images in the file. Similarly, I can grab the N slider over here, which will let me do the same thing. Uh, the other sliders here allow me to control the brightness and contrast of the display. Uh, there are two ways of modifying this. There are, uh, there's the min-max value, and then there's brightness and contrast. If I grab, say, brightness or contrast, it, you'll note that it will also adjust min and max. Uh, if I grab min and max, it will adjust the brightness and contrast. So you can do it either way. Now, sometimes it's more convenient to have the magnification set to an exact value instead of that mouse-based value. So I'll just type 4 here and make it precise scaling factor. All right. There's also a gamma slider which allows us to compensate for different uh, display properties. Uh, we won't need to use that uh, this morning, but it's available if you need it. In some cases it's useful to be able to invert the contrast of an image. Uh, some people prefer dark contrast versus white light contrast. The convention for the actual image files in Eman is that particles and single particle analysis should always be white on a darker background. But if you prefer for display purposes to see them as dark, you just hit invert and then you can look at it that way. It's a toggle. Um, another useful thing you may do in some cases, it's not very useful for a high contrast image like this, but if you say you're looking at a raw micrograph collected on a direct detector or something like that, uh, there's histogram normalization operations. Again, this isn't modifying the image in any way, it's just modifying the display. So if I say histogram flat, that will adjust uh, the histogram so it, it's, it's basically flat. Uh, and if I say histogram gauss, it'll adjust the histogram so it's, it's uh, basically a Gaussian pattern. Uh, and that can dramatically improve the, uh, the display contrast uh, for low contrast images. We'll stick with normal for right now. Okay, uh, now one thing that's, that's often useful to do is, is the auto contrast button. It will do this when it first opens the image file, but if you go from one image that has high contrast to another image that has low contrast, you may want to redo the auto contrast operation. The next set of things is Fourier transforms. Uh, this image widget allows you to look at the two-dimensional Fourier transform, and in fact there's also a tool for one, looking at one-dimensional Fourier transforms of the image object. If I click the AMP button, it will display the amplitude of the Fourier transform in the window. Now you'll note it turned white. I don't see anything at all. Uh, that's because the scale of the Fourier transform is very different, so I need to hit auto contrast again to adjust that. So now we have the, uh, the one-dimensional, uh, sorry, the two-dimensional Fourier transform of the image. Uh, very nice. I can adjust the uh, maximum value to increase the contrast if I want to see smaller values, uh, but uh, eh, for the most part, that's probably fine. Now, there's also a PHA tab, which will let me look at the phases of the image. Now, if I look at the phases, I'll have to auto-contrast again. If I look at the phases, I'll see that there's sort of a rapid fluctuation from one pixel to the next. That's because the default for uh, the default 
origin in for 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 in real space the sort of the phase origin the the origin in real space for the Fourier transform uh, is in the lower left corner of the image. This is a standard convention in pretty much all algorithms that compute Fourier transforms for images. Uh, so I see this very complex behavior. So if I want to make the phases look smoother, I will need to do some pre-processing on my image to shift it to the lower left corner. Um, a nice thing about phases is they're cyclic, uh, which means that they can also they can uh, easily be displayed as color. Uh, which is also cyclic. If you look at the color wheel, uh, that, that, that's also a cyclic pattern. Uh, so if I click the FFT button, what it will do is it will show me the amplitudes as in intensity on the screen, and it will show me the phases as color. Uh, now I can say auto contrast again. You can see uh, a nice pattern of amplitudes and phases for the image. Okay, let's head back to real space again. Uh, and let's say there's some other things we want to do with the image. Uh, Let's say we have an image that uh, that we want to, you know, I'm looking at, say, a stack of particles, and they have very low contrast, so I want to low-pass filter them for the display. Uh, the next tab we're going to look at up here is the, the filter tab, uh, and that allows us to apply a sequence of up to three image processing operations in the image as it's being displayed. It does not modify the image even in memory at all when it does the processing. It, it just modifies how the image is displayed on the screen. So if I check this box, it'll be a low-pass filter, then there's a high-pass filter, and then this is a rescaling of the, the uh, uh, display contrast. Um, the image processing operations shown in this box are standard uh, processors in Eman2. These are the same operations that you would type on the command line for E2Proc2D or E2Proc3D to modify an image permanently. Uh, if you want to learn more about those, I suggest watching the video on e2filtertool.py. So let's turn these back off so I can type whatever I like in the box there to perform those operations. Now let's say we want to perform some measurements in the image. The next tab is the probe tab. This allows me to specify a, a box size, let's say 8 pixels. And then when I drag around the image, it will give me statistics on the pixels in that box. So I'll gra drag over here and you can see it will give me the point value, which is the value at that dot in the center of the box, and it'll give me an area average, uh, standard deviation, skewness, and kurtosis within the box, within that, uh, that particular area of the image. Um, it will also give me the average and the standard deviation, ignoring any pixel values which are exactly zero. Uh, since zero is often used as a mask in Eman, uh, that will allow you to ignore masked out values. Uh, it'll tell me the center coordinate uh, in terms of absolute coordinate, which is uh, 0, 0 in the lower left corner. It'll also tell me the, cent the coordinate uh, of the center of the box uh, with respect to the center of the image. So if I find somewhere near the center of the image, uh, there, that's the center of the image. Okay. Uh, another thing we can do uh, to measure images is uh, on the measure tab, which allows us to measure distances in the image. The default value it puts in here is 1.0 for angstrom, uh, angstroms per pixel. That means that you're measuring pixels in the display. It will not set this to whatever value it finds in the header of the image. Uh, you'll have to type the value in there if you want to modify it. Um, all it's doing would do then is a multiply by that constant. Okay, so I can just draw a line in the image and I can measure distances. Um, which is useful to, to tell how large various objects are. So it'll give me the start coordinates, the end coordinates, uh, then the, uh, the scaled dx and dy, uh, and the absolute length of the final thing. The value that we see here is the value at the last point that uh, I was looking at before I lifted the mouse uh, button down, uh, but before I lifted the mouse button back up. Okay, uh, now let's say we have this, this nice 2D class average here, and we want to use this to build a two-dimensional mask. Now, there are automatic operations that I could perform, which will, uh, which will you know, detect the edge of this object and build a mask for us. Uh, those are things we could do with E2 filter tool, but let's say for some reason I want to do a manual mask. Let's say I wanted to mask out a particular region of the image, like uh, say I just want this lobe right here as a mask. So this gives me a pen that I can draw with. This is a painting tool, not a drawing tool. So I'm not going to set vertices and, and draw lines or anything like that. I'm going to be allowed to paint out regions using a circular paintbrush. Uh, there are 
two pen sizes. Uh, it's a single pen, but this allows me to have one value at a, a certain radius and then have a second value out to a, to a second radius. It's, it's normally not all that useful. So we'll leave our pen size at 5, and the value I want to draw is 0, because I want to mask out the stuff I'm not interested in. Now I can just come over here and use my left mouse button and draw in the image. Now, I'll note there is no undo operation here. So if you screw something up, it's not modifying the image on disk, uh, but so you'll need to, if you screw something up, you'll need to reload the image into memory again, because there is no way of, of undoing it. So I'm going to draw everything at zero, except for the region that I'm interested in. Not doing this very carefully, just quick job. Okay, let's say that's the mask that I want. Now you'll note I have zeros out here, uh, but the values in here aren't one. It's not actually a binary mask at this point. What I need to do is use the Save tab to save this modified image to disk. So I would say Save Image, and that would just save the single image that's being displayed. And then I would use E2Proc2D or a tool like that uh, to uh, up, up, apply a, a threshold to, to make this into a binary mask. Uh, I can do that interactively here just for display purposes using the filter tab. I can just go to this box and say threshold dot not zero and check the box and you can say oops I missed one little spot over here uh, but it'll show you what the what the threshold looks like. Again it's not modifying the image though so if I save the file I'll still get this not this. But if I just use that threshold dot not zero with e2proc2d, then it'll have the, the effect that I'm after. All right, uh, let me switch to a different image since the uh, well, I've wiped out most of that one. Uh, the next tab we'll take a quick look at is the power spectrum tab. That will allow you to compute a one-dimensional power spectrum for either a single image or the entire stack of images. That will open it up in a... Uh, plot window. Uh, we'll talk about the plot widget in a separate demonstration. Uh, there's also a Python tab, which allows me to type arbitrary Python commands in to either manipulate the image or get information about the image if I, if I need it. You have to know some Python, obviously, to use this. This is for more advanced users. Uh, the image that's being displayed on the screen is represented as the variable, uh, variable IMG. Uh, so if I want to find out something like IMG uh, let's say I want the maximum value in the image. Uh, I can say IMG um, maximum. And it will tell me the maximum value of the image. Uh, I could do something to manipulate the image, like say IMG.20. And uh, that will zero the image. Now note the display didn't change. You have to actually trigger something to redraw the display if you want to get it to update the display after doing stuff in this Python box. Um, I would suggest if you want to work with the image in Python, it's probably more convenient to do it from the e2.py command line program, but you can do some simple stuff here if necessary. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is the save tab. Uh, in addition to having capabilities of saving the image itself, also has the ability to save stacks of images as GIF animations or movies. This may require the installation of other software on your machine, uh, but the capability exists, and you can specify the first and last image in the range to display if you do that. Okay, that's uh, about it for this little mini demo. Uh, again, uh, as always, if you have any questions about anything that I've said here, please feel free to either email me or post the eman2 mailing list on uh, Google. Thanks for watching.